Bonjour everybody, this is Tiggy Max with Tiggy Maximus Talks on YouTube, episode 34. Just want to get on here pretty quickly. I want to go over predictions for the NFL Week 9, USC Fight Night, Lemos vs. Rodriguez, and WWE's Crown Jewel, and um, go over a comedy show with Gabriel Iglesias, Bluffy, at the La Jolla Comedy Store. So let's get into it, guys. So... At 9 o'clock Pacific Time on the Peacock app, Peacock channel, we have the WWE Premium Live Event, uh, Crown Jewel in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. It's going to feature the um, the main event, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship will be on the line. The champ, Roman Reigns, will be going up against Logan Paul. I am picking Roman Reigns to beat Logan Paul. And will continue his uh, his long reign of dominance. And see what's next. And he has a whole lineup of challengers that's coming for his title. Don't know when, but at some point Roman Reigns will lose his title. But it may go on for a while. Or it could be very soon. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. So yeah, I'm picking Roman Reigns to beat Logan Paul. Uh, next up, we got Brock Lesnar going up against Bobby Lashley. It should be a hard-fought battle. A lot of shoot fighting. A lot of MMA stuff might be in there. Uh, it should be a good match. Hard hitting. Can't wait to see this matchup as well. But I'm picking Brock Lesnar to beat Bobby Lashley. Uh, next up, we have the Raw Women's Championship. The champ, Bianca Belair, will be defending against Bailey. This has been going on for a while, and a long time coming. And these two work pretty well. And I think Bianca Belair will pull out the victory in this one. And mainly because I kind of want to see Rhea Ripley challenge Bianca Belair, and that should be in a better matchup for the championship. So uh, next up, we have the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions, uh, the Usos, defending their titles against the Brawling Brutes. Um, uh, we got Holland and Pete Dunne or Butch, and I think it's gonna be a good matchup. But I am picking the Usos to continue defending their championship. So they're going to retain. So Usos over the Brawling Brutes. Uh, another tag team matchup for the tag team titles is the Women's Tag Team Championship. Alexa Bliss and Asuka, who just won the titles from Dakota uh, Kai and Io Sky. And... Um, I would say... It's going to be a good matchup. Back and forth between the ladies. I would say Alexa Bliss and Asuka is going to defend and retain their titles against Dakota Kai and Io Sky. But I wouldn't think that the rivalry will, will end at that point. It may continue in various ways. Next up we have Drew McIntyre and Karrion Cross. It's going to be a steel cage match. I have a feeling Drew McIntyre will win this one. You know, even their series one to one in one to one, uh, one on one matchups, and Karen Cross won the last time in a leather strap match. But I think there's going to be a big, big um, rubber match that will end this little rivalry. And whoever wins the, I guess you could say the trilogy, will go on and will become a number one contender to Roman Reigns for his uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I can feel it. Although in a way you do have like four con realistic contenders. Drew McIntyre, Karen Cross, Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley. So in some way, shape, or form, uh, 
you're going to have a number one contender rise from those four guys. So uh, next up we have Braun Strowman and Omos. It's a couple of big men, powerful men. It might not go on for too long, but I think Braun Strowman will defeat Omos in this one. Uh, next up we have the OC with Carl Anderson, Gallows, and AJ Styles going up against the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Damien Priest, and Dominic Mysterio, who will have uh, at ringside Rhea Ripley. She's always an X-Factor. But I have a feeling the Judgment Day will pull out the victory in this one. And then you got Bray Wyatt, who is going to show up at the crown jewel and he's going to do something pretty spectacular and kind of bring in his personas of the humble Bray Wyatt and the fiend and the masked individual that is also kind of part of his uh, persona Uncle Howdy so it should be interesting to watch I will try to wake up and uh, try to start watching that at 9 a.m. and see how that goes. So if you want to make some money off of those picks or just, you know, go on for the along the ride with me and see how fun this could be, um, Crown Jewel, 9, p 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time on the Peacock app or channel. So uh, enjoy it. So next up we have um, we have UFC Fight Night. Marina Rodriguez going up against Amanda Limos. That one is the main event in the straw weight division, and I am picking Marina Rodriguez to beat Limos. Next up we have the co-main event in the welter welterweight division. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez going up against Neil Magny. I am picking Daniel Rodriguez to win that one. Next up, we have Chase Sherman going up against uh, Josh Parisian. Um, I'm picking Parisian to win this one. Uh, next up, we have a flyweight fight with Ulan Bikoff and Manis. I am picking Oolong Bikoff to win this one. Uh, next up we have Mark Madsen is undefeated going up against Grant Dawson. Should be a good fight. Dawson's the favorite in this lightweight fight, but I'm picking Mark Madsen to win this one and go at 13-0. And, and then in the prelims, we got uh, Minner going up against... Shalion Newer Da Baiki. Um, I'm picking Shailon to win this one. Next up, we have a women's flyweight fight between Miranda Maverick and Shauna Young. For those who are paying attention during the weigh in, Shauna Young was about to become overweight, and so the only way she could make weight was to by chopping her hair. Yeah, anything to make weight, right? So, but I am picking Maverick to win this one. Um, next up, we have Mario Batista and Benito Lopez. Uh, Benito Lopez, I believe, he came in overweight, but I'm picking Mario Batista to win, the, to win this one. Um, next up, we have a women's straw weight fight. Pollyanna Viana uh, going up against Jin Yu Frey. But I'm picking Rihanna to win this one. Uh, next up, we have the bantamweight fight. We have Shalinian going against Johnny Munoz. Um, I think I'm picking. Um, I think this one I'm going to pick Johnny Munoz in this one. Just thought about it. And then we have a flyweight fight after that. We have Candelario going up against Jack Hadley. I'm picking Jack Hadley to win this one. 
And then the fight that's going to open the entire card, we have a women's bantamweight fight with Vidal and Pasquale. I'm picking Vidal to win this one. So if you want to make some picks off of the UFC fight night that I made, have fun with it, follow the picks and see how right or wrong I am, but enjoy yourselves and make some money off of those picks. Um, and then let's go into the NFL week nine. Um, week nine had already started with the Eagles beating the Texans 29-17. And if we just go through this quickly, quickly uh, let's start with the Chargers and Falcons. Between the two, Chargers visiting the Falcons, and I am picking the Chargers to win this one, but it won't be a by a blowout. It might be within seven or less points, but nonetheless, Chargers will win and move to five and three. Um, next up, we have Dolphins visiting the Bears. And this one is going to be a good one. Justin Fields going against Tua. I think I'm picking the Dolphins to win this one. It's not going to be a blowout. It's going to be a tough, close game. Um, next up, we have Panthers visiting the Bengals. I like both of these teams. Um, mainly because I like their team colors, uniforms. Well done. But I am picking the Bengals to beat the Panthers. Next up, we have... Uh, Packers visiting the Lions. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the Packers, but I mean, I think the Lions might squeak out a victory in this one. So I'm picking the Lions. Um, Colts visiting the Patriots. I think I have the Patriots bouncing back and winning. Um, uh, Patriots should beat the Colts in this one. Um, but it might be a close game, though. So, And then we have Bills and Jets. I think the Bills will blow out the Jets in this one. Um, Vikings and Commanders should be a good one, but I'm picking the Vikings to continue the winning ways. Vikings over Commanders. We have a good matchup between Raiders and Jaguars in Jacksonville. I'm picking the Jaguars to beat the Raiders. Uh, we have a good fight in between Seahawks visiting the Cardinals. Um, it might be a good showdown. And I think I'm picking the Seahawks to pull out the victory over the Cardinals. And then we have Rams visiting the Buccaneers. Uh, Tom Brady's been going through a divorce. He divorced the... Uh, going through a divorce with Giselle and I think it has affected his play quite a bit and but I think um, after all that uh, Buccaneers should beat the Rams. Rams are kind of struggling and I don't know if they're getting any better. I just hope by the time the Rams and Chargers play on January 1st when I go Sunday Night Football Chargers will defeat the Rams and uh, you know continue that fight for LA. Uh, Sunday Night Football, we have the Titans visiting the Chiefs, and I am picking the Chiefs to beat the Titans. Should be a good game, though. And then Monday Night Football, you have the Ravens visiting the Saints, and that, should, that one should be a good one. And I am relying on Lamar Jackson to get me a lot of fantasy points, so I'm picking the Ravens to beat the Saints. So there you have it, guys. Those are my NFL Week 9 picks. Make some money off of those, too. Uh, you get your WWE picks from Crown Jewel, UFC Fight Night, Limos, and Rodriguez, and NFL Week 9. So enjoy watching all that in the next uh, 48 hours. Make some money off of those. Have a lot of fun with it. Uh, and just want to mention World Series. Um, so the Phillies won the first game. Um, in Houston, they trailed 5-0 and they came back to win 6-5 in extra innings. Game 2, Astros won, um, defeated the Phillies behind Valdez. 
So they tied it one to one. Game three in Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia Phillies crushed the Houston Astros um, with all these homers. Um, game four um, is a good one. Pretty close. And the Astros pulled out the victory and tied the series in Philadelphia in game four. Now, game five, that was a very pivotal game five. And I feel like whoever wins game five to take a 3 2 lead is going to win the World Series. Just as it happens, the Astros won game five in Philadelphia, 3 to 2, and they're now leading the series three games to two. And I'm glad that Justin Verlander got his very first World Series victory. He was 0 6 going into the World Series this year and going into that game. And he finally, finally won that elusive victory. That first victory. So I'm glad he got it and put the Astros in a good position to win the World Series again. So that's going to be at 5 o'clock on Saturday and it's be played in Houston. And I'm pulling for the Astros to win the World Series. Not because the Phillies beat the Padres in the playoffs, but... I do feel the Astros are the better team, but just a little bit of it that I don't want the Phillies to win because, you know, they beat the Padres, so I'm a little bitter. <laughs> All right, and um, Lakers are doing okay. They actually finally won a game. They actually won two games, but they're 2-6. and six. They actually lost earlier tonight. They lost to the Jazz at home, so right now the Lakers are 2-6, and six, but it's a long season in progress, so... We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, the Kings are doing fine. I think they're 6-6, six and six, so they're doing all right. Good start, anyway. And, um, um, oh, we have the MLS Cup Final on Saturday. You have the LAFC going up against the Philadelphia Union. I'm actually pulling for LAFC because I've been kind of following them as well for MLS, so... Um, that should be fun, and that makes my entire Saturday pretty much fun-filled with sports of all sorts. Um, World Series, WWE Crown Jewel, UFC Fight Night, even Aztecs are playing UNLV at Snapdragon Stadium at 4 o'clock on Saturday, so it should be a good Saturday, plus the Chargers are playing on Sunday. So, hopefully... The World Series will be ending on Saturday, but if it ends on Sunday, that would be great as well. So, a great weekend for sports and stuff. And, um, let's end this on my review of the comedy show at the La Jolla Comedy Store with Fluffy Gabriel Iglesias. I got to see him at Paula about three years ago. Um, he had the opener with uh, Alfredo Robles and Gina Brillion. Side note, Gina Brillion will be forming at the Mic Drop in Claremont Mesa Boulevard on November 11th, Friday. I'm going to that show, and that's only because she should have been at the show in September, but they double booked her at the Mic Drop, so they canceled her show, and now I got rescheduled for November 11th, and my ticket is good for that November 11th show. So I'll be seeing her November 11th at the mic drop, and hopefully she still remembers who I am. Um, so with that being said, um, tonight's show, Gabriel Iglesias, I would rate it basically 10 out of 10 overall, because all three comics that showed up for tonight with Martin Moreno, Alfredo Robles and Gabriel Iglesias, they were all funny, so, um, what's great about it is that with Gabriel Iglesias, he said that we could take pictures of him on stage, um, which normally the, is the policy at the comedy store that you can't take any video or photos because, you know, he's providing material and he doesn't want anybody to, to leak any of his new material and sort of in any itty bitty way ruin it for everybody else 
because you know he puts a lot of work into his uh, comedy his material and the show itself so and I totally understand that. and I never take video of anyone's comic um, comedy show so uh, I only like to take pictures after the show or during the show but I don't I don't take any videos and I, and I know that too so well let's start so the first comic tonight was uh, Martini Moreno and I've heard about him over the years how he's associated with Fluffy and man the guy is super funny <laughs> so I think Martin Moreno I think he was like a 8.9 out of 10 it was really funny and then um, the next uh, comic that opened for Gabriel Iglesias Fluffy was Alfredo Robles and I thought his I, he had some material from the last time I heard of him three years ago but he has some new materials and I always love his bit where he says you need to practice the speech about how the dad um, could not make it and you're supposed to say um, my dad has work um, what was it my dad has work um, uh, what was it my dad has work or my dad's busy at work and he can't um he can't make it out or he doesn't he did he won't have time to come out so and it's funny because Gabriel Iglesias actually used that same line um in his own way in his own act comedy act tonight so um Alfred, Alfredo Robles I think he was uh 8.8 .8 out of 10 so he was pretty funny and then the main event, Gabriel Iglesias Fluffy. I think he was a 9.5 out of 10. Um, and it's funny because I said 10 out of 10 after the whole show, but the fact that all three were really, really funny, got the whole crowd laughing all night long. That, that's for me, that's a 10 out of 10. But um, individually, yeah, I think the rating for each comic kind of does fit pretty well and I th I would say rating Gabriel Iglesias 9.5 is the highest rated for any comic I've done for anybody I think I've put Jerry Seinfeld as a 9.3 or something you might have to check the tape on that one but um, uh, I would say you know in the order of who I think is super funny I would have to say Gabriel Iglesias is number one, George Seinfeld number two, and I guess number three would have to be Chris Porter. So, um, yeah, so I'm glad that uh, Gabriel Iglesias had a show because when I was at Pala, I was probably 30 rows away from the stage. So, to be only 20 feet away at the Hoya Comedy Store from him. It was a good intimate show and he had some music playing so I'm glad he made it out to San Diego and um, it, it's really great to listen to um, all three comics especially Martin I haven't heard of um, do his comedy act but now that I've heard of his comedy act I'm glad that I got to be at that show tonight so um, but yeah, overall, they're all funny. And I got to buy uh, a Gabriel Iglesias fluffy keychain. The uh, the Funko Pop version of the keychain. So, um, I have it here. This is the, uh, the Funko Pop keychain. And they were telling everybody that you have to buy two because they come in pairs. So... I am going to cherish this, and I'm glad that I went to the show, and I'll say it again and again. So I'm glad I got to uh, come out and finally get to see Gabriel Iglesias, and technically I would have wanted to take a picture with him personally, but I totally get it because he has another show right after hours, and he probably won't have time to do meet and greets with everybody before the show. So, But the fact that 
he took a photo with, uh, you know, let everybody take a photo of him on stage. That that was more than I can ask for. So, um, so yeah, I can't wait for the next comedy show. And the next one I have lined up is um, Gina Brillion on November 11th. But I'm pretty sure I'll be going to other comedy shows in the meantime. So, so just look out for my other comedy comedy reviews of you know that, and then me making more predictions. So, uh, so with that being said, um, this is Tiggy Maximus, um, signing off. Have a fun weekend, everybody. Be safe. Have a lot of fun. And I'll talk to you guys again about more stuff, sports, comedy, food. So, all right. There, guys. Aloha. Bonjour. Oh yeah, and go Chargers. <laughs>